Hi, I'm Scott from Panasonic Australia. We're here bringing you some tips and tricks on the Lumix GH3 camera. Now these hints are gonna help you get familiar with this camera. Whilst the GH3 is a superb stills camera, it's also equally at home at shooting outstanding video. Uh, now if you're a, a user that just likes a simple interface, easy to point and shoot, and still get uh, excellent video quality, well the GH3 still has intelligent auto and can give you just that. But if you're an advanced user and like to delve in a bit deeper, uh, there's a lot going on under the hood that makes the GH3 the ultimate videographer's camera. So I'd like to go through some of the codec options you have with the GH3. Uh, you can shoot in AVC-HD like we had previously with the GH2. AVC-HD is a convenient format in that you can shoot, you can plug it directly, uh, plug your SD card directly into your TV and watch it back conveniently and it still provides a high quality but also uh, efficient file size. You can shoot in MP4 if you would like. MP4 is excellent for easy uploading to social media and other web-based purposes. It's also a small file size as well. Uh, on the GH3, we're introducing a new codec for us. That's the Move codec, uh, which offers outstanding image quality, but also easy editing. So MOV gives us two options. There's the traditional GOP structure or IPB format, as you might be familiar with. We also have the new intracodec. Uh, intracodec means that every single frame is encoded individually on itself. This allows for faster and more precise editing. So you can actually edit at the frame level without the need to transcode into a different format for your nonlinear editor. Now for the Australian version of the GH3, uh, those of you who like to shoot at 720p, uh, you have the option of shooting that in the MOV format using 50 frames per second, using the all intra codec 72 megabits per second. If you'd like to shoot at 1920 by 1080, you've got a few choices here. You can shoot at 24p, uh, and you can do that using all intra 72 uh, megabits, or you can shoot at 50 megabits using IPB. Uh, if you're shooting at 25 frames per second, you've also got the all intra 72 megabit option. You've also got the 50 megabit IPB option as well. Now we also have the ability to shoot at a higher frame rate. You can shoot at 50p uh, on this camera as well, and you can do that at 50 megabits per second as well. Speaking of high frame rates, you've also got the option to over crank or under crank. Uh, with the camera as well. So there are a variety of different choices in this which I'll cover off in a little bit more detail. So undercranking gives you the illusion that everything will be moving really fast on the screen. The GH3 gives you several choices here. Uh, you can have playback at 160%, you can have it at 200% and you can also have it at 300% and that is in relation to its real-time speed. We also have overcranking options as well. So overcranking enables the camera to shoot at a higher frame rate and plays it back slower, giving you a slow motion effect. You've got three choices in this area. They are 40%, 48% and 80% playback of real time. Another great feature of the GH3 is its HDMI output. Uh, not only can you output to a monitor for say a director or someone else to view uh, what the camera is seeing, you can also turn off any overlays and get a completely clean HDMI output to allow you to record to an external recording device. This would allow you to record at whatever bitrate or whatever format you would like to record at. So another great feature of the GH3 is the ETC mode or extra teleconversion. Now there may be times where you're out in the field where the lens you've got on your camera simply doesn't have the reach that you're after. And this can often result in the editor uh, cropping your image in post-production. Uh, of course, this results in a lower resolution and diminished image quality, so it's far from ideal. Now the ETC mode actually allows you to get more reach 
while still maintaining image quality. Instead of using the whole sensor to acquire your image, it uses just the central pixels, sensor 1920 by 1080 pixels, which gives you that reach that you're after, but still maintains that full high definition resolution during video. So in terms of focusing on the GH3, you've got a few options. There's a conventional manual focusing, of course. We also have conventional autofocus. Uh, so it's very f similar to what you may have used with um, other video cameras implemented on the GH3. We also have three other focus modes I want to cover off for you. The first of which is autofocus tracking. You can actually select a point uh, on the screen and that subject as it moves will actually be tracked by the camera and uh, will hold focus during your video shooting. We also have face detection as an option. Uh, so face detection looks for faces in your scene and will actually uh, lock focus onto those faces. Great for things like piece to camera work and that type of thing. And the third of these is single point autofocus, allowing you to choose a point anywhere on your screen of a small size or a large size. It's user selectable and the camera will actually keep focus on that particular point. Now when you use that in conjunction with the touch screen, this actually enables smooth, controlled focus racking. So you can use the touch screen to select a point that you want in focus, then while you're video recording, select another point, the focus will actually do a, a slow focus pull move from that one point to the second point that you've selected. Uh, these are all a bunch of great tools for videographers to make your focusing work easier. So let's have a look at audio on the GH3. You've got the built-in stereo microphone on top of camera uh, for standard video recording. If you'd like to connect an external microphone though, we actually have uh, a microphone input on the side. Now this has been upgraded to a 3.5mm standardised connector based on the feedback we had from GH2 users. So you can actually uh, attach um, an external microphone like the new Lumix one we've got. You could also hook up say a um, wireless microphone or something like that if you would like um, to that jack. We also have easier level setting on the camera as well. So you've actually got 19 steps of control over the uh, lower amount we had previously. You'll also see underneath here, we have a 3.5mm headphone connector too, allowing you to now cleanly and clearly monitor the audio that you're getting. Speaking of which, there are actually two monitoring modes. One of those is real time, so you're actually hearing just the live feed that comes into the input. You also have another one that is the recorded feed, um, which introduces a slight delay but allows you to actually hear the sound after the encoding process, so you're getting a better representation of the sound that's getting recorded to camera as well. So a lot of great options. So a great thing about the GH3 is the ergonomics and design of the camera. It's really comfortable to hold. I could easily be shooting with this uh, all day, very comfortably, and it's still very lightweight as well. Uh, having a nice comfortable grip is one thing, but even the button layout is, uh, is designed to be really user friendly. You've actually got five hard customizable buttons as well as two custom buttons on screen, uh, soft buttons. So um, it's really easy to set up the way that you want to use it. You can see here that I've also got the uh, optional battery grip attached. Our, uh, our good friend Jack McCoy took this out uh, for a day shooting a short film a couple of weeks ago and uh, he used the two batteries, so one in the battery grip, one in the body and was able to get a full day's worth of shooting out of the camera batteries. So um, outstanding performance in that area as well. That also brings me to another thing, that in the Australian version of the GH3, there are no time restrictions whatsoever. So you can shoot for as long as you have space on the card and power remaining in your battery. No restrictions there. The other thing is that the design of the camera is, uh, is what they call a heat proof design. It's designed so the sensor will not overheat. You won't get any uh, indicators telling you that sensor's too hot, you need to stop video recording, unlike some of the other digital SLR cameras um, that also have add-on video capability. You'll also see this design really robust. It's a weather sealed body um, that means that even with light rain and uh, you know, not very good conditions, you're still able to shoot and it's not gonna interrupt uh, your shooting time. 
And when you pair it with the uh, 12 to 35 mil lens like I have here, or the 35 to 100 mil lens that we also have, both of the lenses are weather sealed, enabling you to shoot uh, in a lot more versatile way. So just a couple of other things to cover off with the GH3. One of those is priority mode for video and still shooting at the same time. If you're shooting video and you wanna also take high full resolution stills in RAW or using the mechanical shutter, uh, you select still priority. And uh, you'll get your video, you'll also get your high resolution still images with just a slight interruption in the video. Now, if you'd like to have the priority on the video, select video priority. There'll be no interruptions at all to the video and you will get a lower resolution JPEG uh, from the scene using the electronic shutter. So it's quite versatile for people who are trying to capture both still and video options while they're out in the field. Another thing to cover off is the highlight indicators. So this is similar to the zebra pattern that people who are used to broadcast cameras uh, may be familiar with. So if you're shooting a scene, uh, particularly a bright scene, the indicators on the screen can show you where the highlights are and where any overexposure or clipping is happening. The GH3 also comes with time code options as well. So um, really great if you're used to working with time code. Now there are far more features than we have the time to actually go through. So please have a look at the website for more information. And you can see from all of this that even if you're a simple point and shoot user, the GH3 has got you covered, but for a powerful and robust performance for the enthusiast videographer, the GH3 really is the ideal choice. So that's it, I hope you found our tips useful. If you'd like any more information, head on over to www.panasonic.com.au.